everyone. This is Yumei. Welcome back. So last week, I have invited our department head of industry and application group, Joey, and he has explained what is industrial IoT. But today, I wanted to give you guys a further explanation what is the application of industrial IoT devices. So I invited our product director of IEG to sit down with me here and talk about the actual case scenario deployed our IoT product. He's going to share with us through a story, which we have provided a solution to help our customers through our IoT devices. Okay, so without further introduce him, let's get into actual case studies. Let's get into the story. Hi Kevin, thank you for sitting down with me here today. So I'd like to ask you, I know you have a lot of experiences on our product and talking to our customers and actually dealing with the solutions. So I wanted to hear more about our the behind the scenes stories. So when you first visit Mengding Mountain in Sichuan, what was your first impression there and how did you realize there is the actual demand of our products? But what was your story? Did you talk with the customer there? When I first go to the Tin Mountain in Sichuan province a few years ago, I saw a lot of mountains and a lot of farmers growing teas there. There's a lot of tea gardens. The, the site is very beautiful and the farmers are very nice. But when I talking to them, I learned that they have concerns about sometimes they may have decrease of productions. But why? Uh, because they uh, said that the environment will have huge impact on the uh, uh, growth of the tea, the green tea. And uh, I was thinking about uh, how I can do something to help them. Uh, yeah, from the technical side, uh, we design IoT devices. Yeah, I see the problem now, but what is your solution there? Yes, I think I can help them. Yeah, to build some sensors to help them to monitor the data. Yeah. Yes, I think uh, the tea growth has different stages, and uh, uh, the environment will take huge impact on the uh, growth, especially like uh, low air temperature and humidity in frost weather days, and uh, of course the soil. Uh, moisture and uh, temperature is uh, one uh, is another key parameters, and also the sunlight will uh, take huge uh, impact to the tea. So we wanted to collect those data and provide it to the farmer by very easy way, like a cell phone apps. They can based on that to make better growth. Uh, decisions. I see and I understand that. So in order to deploy the sensors in the outdoor environment, what are the considerations that you had during the product development process? Uh, yes, like those tiny sensor devices. Um, this one is exactly the one um, that is deployed in the tea gardens. Are there any features that you need to make sure that it will deploy in an outdoor? What are the key features that we have to include it in our product? Uh, when we decide to deploy the sensor to the outdoors in the field, we should have take uh, something into serious considerations. I can say there is three key uh, features we uh, think really a lot. Uh, the first one is no power consumption. The second one is um, the non-distance uh, communication. The next one, of course, is uh, reliability. So let me talk about the first one. How about yeah? Um, we we know that the tea is growing in the field and there is uh, big mountains. That sensor should deploy it a mountain in middle of nowhere, and uh, there is not possible to get powered on like uh, electricity. So it has to be a power to buy uh, batteries inside and. Uh, People will not often go to the mountains to take care of the devices. Uh, they cannot go there uh, twice a week to replace batteries. So we need to consideration, uh, take into consideration that the battery should last for less than like three to five years. Uh, will save a lot of cost to the farmers. Uh, yes, that's the first point. It should be a uh, very low power consumption. And the second one is. Um, 
long distance communication because we will put a lot of sensor in the field and they are all connected to the gateway by wireless and uh, the distance is, is not controlled by people it should be it can be very uh, long like up to five kilometers to ten kilometers so the long distance uh, communication is powered by the technology we call the LoRa. Uh, yeah, that is quite powerful. And then the, the next one uh, is uh, reliability test. I think that is the most important uh, since we should take into consideration why. Because it's an uh, industrial level devices. Um, before we manufacture it, we will do some uh, test like uh, low temperature to minus 40 and uh, high temperature to 85 Celsius degree. And of course, uh, the cold and hot shock, the vibration during the, the transportations. And uh, when, I, when we finish that, uh, that's the first part. And uh, we would choose uh, some very reliable materials to give them the feature to waterproof because the sensor will deploy it outside there is sometimes raining and uh, snowing so the standard of this sensor is IP66 it's quite uh, powerful and uh, can durable in the harsh environment yeah that's basically three key features when we designing the device yeah I see so low power consumption, long distance communication, and reliability, of course. But I'd like to know, after two years of the deployment, what, what is the outcome of the project right now? Like, how is the our customer, how is he doing with the tea garden now? Yes, I haven't been there for uh, quite a long time, but I see a picture from the mountains. Uh, those devices are alive and uh, healthy and perfectly working and to, to collect in data and uh, send to the gateway and push to the server and the farmer can uh, monitor the environment day by day. Uh, so why it can survive so long time? So pretty happy to see that those devices is healthy as healthy as we are designing for it. Yeah. And uh, I think the farmers will also take, take advantage from it. Uh, the first one, they can make better decisions and also they can do some promotions based on those IoT devices uh, which, which use uh, the modern technology to help for the farmers to gain better profit. Uh, we are not only design this device for the tea gardens. We are not designing those sensors just for single scenarios. It can be uh, used in different scenarios like smart cities to monitor in the environment and uh, in the smart uh, factories, uh, smart factory to monitor the vibrations and uh, the gas. So here is a big giant one. It's a way called uh, or in one compact weather station, it's durable, it's uh, compactable, compactable, and uh, you can see there is night sensor, uh, rain sensors, night sensors, um, wind speed and wind directions, uh, temperature, and it can up to ten parameters. Yeah, it, it's quite a lot, and those uh, sensors. Uh, uh, is ready for uh, uh, different scenarios and uh, especially for industrial use. That's great. That's important for our future customers to realize that this kind of devices are not only used for agriculture, not only used for tea gardens, but also able to deploy in like smart factory, smart cities. As long as you need weather monitoring, our devices are able to deploy and be able to uh, collect data, transfer data, something like that. Okay, that's cool. I think that's all the questions for today. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing all of this
detailed information of our product and our development process and also all the story of our customers. So for next episode, I'll get into actual devices. What is the technology we are using? Like the Laura he has mentioned, he will explain a further step. What is the actual communication protocol we are using and why is it important for industrial IoT? Okay, that's not that's all for today. I'll see you next time. If you like this kind of content, please follow us on YouTube, LinkedIn, 